Are you Chief Justice John Marshall? Indeed I am. And who might you be? I am a lawyer from 21st century Iowa. Iowa? It is a state that will be added to the Union in 1846. I see. You are one of those extra normal time travelers, then? Yes. It's amazing how computer animation is bringing people from different centuries together. Isn't it? So how can I help you? I need you to come to the 21st century with me, or my career could be over. Why the urgency? Back home, I allowed a woman to reason with me and make me see the benefits of judicial accountability. The judges have eyes everywhere. As penance, the Iowa Bar has instructed me to come find you and bring you back with me, to educate the public on the importance of judicial review and judicial independence, and take political pressure off of the judges. Surely the people of the 21st century can work things out for themselves. I'm afraid the situation is desperate. Last fall, three Iowa Supreme Court justices were voted off the bench in the retention election. Why? Because people disagreed with the ruling that same-sex couples had a fundamental right to have their marriages legally and culturally recognized. What the hell is a same-sex couple? A couple made up of two men or two women. What? How in the hell does it work? Um... Listen, that would be a long story. But I think we're both on the same page about anti-retention campaigns. Do you? You know, several of the original 13 states were holding full-blown judicial elections at the time the U.S. Constitution was ratified. That can be. The framers of the U.S. Constitution were careful to insulate the judicial branch from political pressure. They were careful to insulate the Federal Supreme Court from political pressure, because they set the Federal Supreme Court up mainly as an arbiter of constitutional issues between different facets of government, such as the President and Congress, or the House and the Senate, or the Secretary of State and appointed judges. They knew that if the Supreme Court was part of the political fray, they could not be objective. No one was worried about political pressure on local judges. Local judges make day-to-day -day decisions impacting the lives of the common citizens who depend on them to maintain order and justice, and so, probably should face some political pressure. I am sure states are perfectly capable of figuring out the best procedures for themselves. But what if a judge is trying a major case when he's up for retention? Studies have shown that judges are more likely to impose rash judgments such as the death penalty when they're up for retention. Again, citizens depend on judges to uphold order and justice. If I wins feel that a judge's failure to use the death penalty is a miscarriage of justice, what are they supposed to do? Well, actually, Please tell me you still use the death penalty in Iowa. The 21st century U.S. Supreme Court is this close to abolishing the death penalty. But what do you do when someone commits a heinous crime? We put them in a prison and feed and clothe them at taxpayers' expense for decades. Or else we let them go free with a slap on the wrist. You don't have the death penalty, and you have men marrying men and women marrying women. It has become clear to me that 21st century Iowa has problems far in excess of what I can help you with. Good day, sir. But you, John Marshall, the author of Marbury vs. Madison and the father of judicial review, you have to help me. You do realize I misquoted the Constitution when I wrote that thing, don't you? Some days I really am embarrassed that I wrote it. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going home to murder my children, so none of my descendants will have to live in the world you've created. For real? Probably not. But it's tempting. Holy crap. The bar is going to strip the skin from my body and boil me in oil.